So next, we're going to hear about our space. And we have with us Aiden Ablona and Vincent Franco. Aiden Ablona is a proud queer Filipino with a passion for social justice, health equity, and community development. He was first introduced to the field of gay men's health at, as an outreach and facilitation volunteer at AIDS Committee of Toronto after becoming a research assistant at the HIV Prevention Lab at Ryerson University under the direction of Dr. Trevor Hart, he developed a specific interest in HIV and gay men's health research. He currently works with Resist Stigma, a national anti-stigma project for young bi queer guys led by the Community-Based Research Center for Gay Men's Health, as we all know. And he continues to volunteer with various community-based organizations and health centers. Earlier this year, he helped to create Our Space, a Toronto-based collective of young guys who like guys who seek to support and develop their community. And then we also have Vincent Franco. Since high school, Vincent has been volunteering in LGBTQ groups of all kinds, and he has also created and coordinated a program for LGBTQ rights that is still running in his hometown of Sherbrooke, Quebec. He completed an undergraduate degree of sexology at UConn University. While working in gay men's health on different research product, projects, most, notice, most notice, notably as a motivational interviewing trained counselor on the SPOT project at the medical clinic of Corte Latin. After graduation, Vincent spent two years working as a sexologist in the Montreal for Mason Planck, a nonprofit organization supporting people living with HIV. He moved to Toronto in October 2013, where he kept working and volunteering in the gay men's sexual health sector. He currently works as the motivational interviewing project leader with Gay Men's Sexual Health Alliance of Ontario and volunteers with Our Space, a collective of young gay, bi, and queer cis and trans men in Toronto. So please welcome Vincent and Aiden. Thank you, Darren, for that very generous introduction. Didn't write it sounds that. so cool. I know. Yeah. <laughs> On loudspeakers, we do. Um, it works. Um, so we're here to talk to you about our space, which is an initiative that started um, uh, kind of as a result of, of totally outright that happens in Toronto. Um, so the title of the presentation is Our Space, a youth-led initiative to support the health and well-being of young guys who like guys. Uh, I'm just going to plug some of our, our social media channels. If anyone is a tweeter in the house, um, you can check us out on Twitter at Arspace Toronto, on Tumblr, Instagram, on Facebook. Um, yeah, so what is Arspace? Um, as you can see, Arspace is a Toronto based collective of young guys who like guys. Through interactive workshops, training sessions, and social events, we strive to empower each other with the knowledge, skills, and networks necessary to support our overall health and well being. That sounds really nice. Um, and we'll get more into what that actually means. Uh, but first, uh, a trip down memory lane for us, and we're going to a bit of the history. Hi. Um, um, so the history of our space started a year ago. You were like behind me. Um, <laughs> when um, Aiden and I became friends uh, through someone that did totally outright in Vancouver who moved to Toronto for school for two years who sort of like met me through a totally outright event and was friend with Aiden and introduced us to each other. And then, and that, that's a pretty picture of the three of us. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> so um, Aiden and I became friend and we both saw like totally outright is happening in Toronto three times a year. That means that three times a year we have somewhere in between 15 and 25 young gay men uh, who graduates from Totally Outright with the want and the need to do something for their community and to do it like <laughs> now because they're like Totally Outright is a great program and uh, it creates momentum and um, just Aiden and I were just two people, person that like were in that momentum at the good place at the good time. So one day we went for lunch and Aiden told me, you know what, there's, there's not much happening in Toronto for gay men, for like the global health of gay men that is not attached to an AIDS service organization. Uh, and AIDS service organizations are doing great work. Uh, they, 
I'm super happy they're there. I, I work for one, uh, <laughs> but there's also other needs that can be uh, other things that can be done if not attached to an aid service organization. And then uh, over lunch, Aiden asked me like, we should start something. What Aiden doesn't know is that at that time I almost said no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but I decided to say yes, and the first thing we did was to recruit the third person. Yes, uh, I was busy. <laughs> uh, the first thing we did is to recruit the third person who's not here today, who's Ricky Rodriguez, who was the peer um, worker for Toliat Wright for two years, who's an incredible person. If you ever met him, uh, he's, he's like I've always said, if one day I start something in game and health, the first person I'm going to hire is Ricky Rodriguez. And so I did. Uh, check. So um, we started talking, thinking about what we wanted to do. It was like such a huge project. We decided to focus on youth. Uh, so we're sort of like 30-ish uh, and younger. Uh, some of us are getting there quicker than we'd hoped. Um, <laughs> and so. Um, I decided to focus on like young gay men and give them like things to do, which are like workshops, social event, um, a place to talk, a place to uh, so like be themselves. What's coming? Um, so we decided to do that by engaging the graduates of Toliat right in Toronto. I'm t I'm going to talk a little bit of the process, how we created our space on the next slide, um, to create a spice a, a spice a space. For you, it's spicy too. Uh, a space for uh, youth guys to learn from and support each other um, year round and not just during those like specific events of Totally Outright. Uh, to create an opportunity to develop skills and build capacity. This is a very important part of our space that I'm going to touch a little bit uh, later um, to address the holistic health needs uh, and that, like, to us includes social uh, events. So we do have social events with just nothing else than just a place, a safe place for young gay men to meet uh, other young gay men. And with no agenda, just like having friends does help your, your general like wellness. And it's sometimes something that is very difficult to explain to the funders, but we don't have funders, so whatever. <laughs> um, it's no cost, it's completely volunteer run. We have no money. We have someone that is for one year has been our finance coordinator and has done nothing related to his work yet <laughs> because we have no money. <laughs> uh, we did one event that we had like an extra like $70 that we donated um, to a trans group in, in Toronto because we were playing a movie around trans issues and uh, it was a pay what you can event and all the extra money that we made, we give it, we donate it to a trans group. So bye bye 70 bucks. Um, <laughs> imagine what we could have done. Uh, <laughs> and it's to build a community for young guys who like guys. Um, and so the first thing we did, uh, Ricky, Aiden, and I was thinking we, we need, it, it needs to be more than just the three of us. Um, so we sh like let out a call on like all the alumni from Totally Outright in Ontario, which was around a hundred something at that time, uh, and including like a survey of like what do you think is missing in the gay men's health in Toronto? What would you like seeing happening? Are you interested in being in our work committee? And if yes, what would you bring to the table? And what are the issues that for you are like extremely important? Um, and then we received the like insane amount of people who were interested. So we thought at being like seven of us at first in the committee, but when we had like, I think 26 people saying that they wanted to be uh, with us. Uh, so we decided to go from seven to nine with the knowing that for the first year we could not be more than nine people because we're, we're like creating something from scratch, but uh, in the hope that after a year, and it's happening right now, we're gonna discuss this later, it could grow bigger. Uh, so we selected um, the guys from the committee, uh, sort of like based on their interest, their availability, so like something as uh, simple as that, uh, trying to find people with diverse background, with bringing diverse things to the table, and also, uh, we, wanted, we want our space to be um, like a project for 
young gay men to give them a chance to like start working, building their, their networking. So there was a part of our work when we select the committee that we chose highly sometime education, uh, like highly educated guys with like very low sort of like education because they couldn't get a first job, they couldn't get experience, they couldn't get anything. And that's a very important part of our space, uh, meaning that I don't see myself being in our space in five years because in five years there's gonna be other amazing young gay men that I hope will take my place and will use our space to build their credibility, their network and their experience and then can find a job later on. So this is really important in the, in the structure of our space. There's nine of us right now. Um, and we've been working for one year, and Ricky's gonna. Uh, Aiden. Ricky is not here. Ricky Aiden is thinking is about you. Uh, thank you, Vincent. <laughs> I can do this all on my own, apparently. Um, so now we're getting into like what we can do. Like I don't know if you noticed, but we have no money, and <laughs> we. Um, but we're like, is that gonna stop us from doing stuff? No. So we had guys who had experience in facilitation. We had subjects and topics that people were interested in talking about and learning about like learning from each other about. We had um, space, free space available at different community organizations that were willing to lend it out to us. We had guys who had um, experience in outreach, help with promotion. We had graphic designers who were willing to contribute to help with um, making posters around that. And we just wanted to like bring that all together and like let's start doing something rather than waiting for funding. So um, this is kind of, a, a, that's a picture of a workshop. Um, and as you can see, it's led by one of the members of our working committee and then another volunteer who is a graduate from Totally Outright. Um, and on the side, you'll see some of the topics um, that we've addressed in uh, some of our earlier workshops. We um, had a workshop um, about stigma in the gay community. We had um, a workshop on queer minds and radical visions, mental health for young queer guys, like what does that mean to us? Um, we. Our graphic designer is also very keen and to turn images into GIFs, GIFs, GIF GIFs. And um, you can see we, we wanted to create opportunities for people to build actual capacity for themselves. So we had a workshop hosted by one of the guys in the collective who's a registered social worker and he led a workshop on active listening. Um, the event that ben Vince Selm mentioned before um, was a movie night that we held in response to Stonewall's release, and we hosted our own movie night on opening night. Um, that was where we showed the Marsha P. Johnson documentary, and then we donated all the profits to a local community organization serving uh, queer and trans youth. And then we also had a beach day where we just kind of got all the guys together, get go over to Hanlon's Point, which is um, a clothing optional beach uh, in Toronto. Um, and uh, while we were all together, we also engage each other in conversations around body image and self-care and what, do, what does your body mean to you and how do you love your body. So there's just some of the, uh, a bit of the stuff that we've, of the events and social, uh, social events workshops that we've been doing. Um, and all of our, a lot of our uh, events can, are, um, we have uh, someone on the working committee who's really interested in writing, and so he, he um, tries to recap the event uh, to flesh out the conversations that were had and kind of highlight some of the things that were happening. And we, they have, are found on our Tumblr, um, and they've also been shared on the Gay Men's Sexual Health Alliance uh, blog. Um, it's ouragenda.ca, so you can see some of that work there as well as on our Tumblr. And Vincent's gonna talk about a special project that happened. Yeah, um, so one thing that happens every year is the Pride. Uh, and yeah, I know. Um, and although Pride is fantastic and comes from a great history and brought us so many things, it's also not always easy for young gay guys to go around Pride. So um, we decided to do an activity in the month of June, which was a, just a picnic around Pride. Um, and it was in a park that is near like the gay area um, in Toronto, but it is not necessarily like, not a lot of like gay folks sort of like go there. And we decided to reclaim our space uh, and just go and do a picnic where like a lot of people, like 40 something people showed up for that picnic. Um, and we went around, is this working? No, anyway, you can see. Um, so we went around and like asked people what are their, their tips to like survive, survive pride? What is like your best practices for uh, pride? And we asked uh, Juan, our uh, graphic designer who's in the committee, who's 
phenomenal and doing such a great job. Um, to sort of like make that into like tips online that people could use online. And he really went above and beyond by creating uh, our tips uh, for the Pride Survival Guide. So these are our like youth-driven, youth-centered. Uh, some of them are as easy as drink a lot of water um, and then don't let anyone like rain on your parade um, and say hi to cute boys. Like, all of this is our, 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 on our website. You can go on and, like, read more about it. But um, it, 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 I think this one, this was one of our, like, main, like, first and main uh, event. And it really set the tone to what our space is. It's playful. It's youth-centered. It's youth-driven. It's, it doesn't take itself, like, too seriously. But it is touching upon, like, extremely serious uh, subject. Um, and it's beautiful. <laughs> and now I'm going to talk to you about one of our, um, our proudest projects. Um, we uh, had one in our working committee it just came up one day and was just like, I have this idea. Why don't we just do like a, a coming out stories series? And we're like, OK, wait. Now I feel like we've heard a lot of coming out stories. So if we're going to do a, a series on what it means to come out, we're going to, have, we're going to make sure we have stories about you know, different experiences and perceptions of what it means to be in and out of the closet. So we really wanted to just kind of diversify, you know, the mainstream narrative of, of coming out. Like there's a, a, a kind of mainstream message around like you need, this is how you come out and coming out is the best way to be. And for a lot of people, it isn't and it's not safe for them to come out. And we wanted to just kind of, you know, get those stories from the community, from young guys, like what are their experiences? What um, are they going through? What does it mean to not be out to come out? Um, and just kind of left it at that. We were, it was very kind of open-ended. There were no real rules around it. And we also asked guys to submit a picture with their story. Um, so one could trans, uh, transform those pictures into um, graphic images, like paintings that he was going to do, um, so that you could have a story paired with um, a portrait of the person, and then just create this the 30 stories uh, kind of resource uh, altogether, publication. Um, and then we started, we managed to get 30 guys, and we started releasing our story series on National Coming Out Day. So on National Coming Out Day, we, we shared a story around that. So, and we've been releasing them one by one. Um, uh, so it's been happening throughout the month of October, and it's coming to an end soon. So this is kind of an example of what it looks like. Um, and what we were super happy to see was just like a variety of stories about like what it means to come out. Some people talked about you know, coming out as loving someone that was older than you, coming out with relation to their HIV status, coming out um, to just one person because that's all that matters, not coming out and how that's freeing for them. So it was really um, just trying to like show more of the diversity in that. Um, and with that project, we were actually able to um, get a small uh, community arts grant. Money. And, <laughs> like a, a bit of money. We're still very no money. Um, but we're looking to expand that. And we want to put the money towards you know, hiring more um, artists from the queer community who are like, very underemployed and, often, um, and we just want to compensate them for their time. Um, one of the series that we're going to be doing Yes, um, so we're, this is our like, first 30 coming out stories, and we kind of like group together with other artists, and we're super happy that we have money to pay the artists because there are so many talented young gay men artists that basically cannot get any money from their art. Um, and one of the projects I'm working on right now with two new artists that are not on the working committee per se, so that like we're bringing in some new volunteers, is um, an intergenerational piece, so like, 30 stories of 30 guys who were 30, 30 years ago, and how that was, and how can the young generation learn from them. Um, so that's exciting. And we're also going to do a series on STIs, testing and sexual health. We thought it would be really fun if we get 30 stories about um, 30 stories about testing positive for an STI. I thought it'd be really fun, but also kind of broader perceptions of sexual health um, challenge, stigma around sexual health testing, and see um, what guys would young guys would have to say about their sexual health lives. And this is an example of some art that the artist we recruited for that specific project was thinking it could maybe be used as some kind of imagery for the project, but not necessarily tied to it. So it's more just a teaser image that you're seeing for the first time. 
And the artist for the 30 years later is a photographer. So we're going to just take beautiful pictures of the guy who gives them uh, their talk about what it was like 30 years ago. And we're really hoping that all these guys can provide a picture of them 30 years ago to like put together. Uh, that would be interesting visually. Um, so now we're just going to talk about some of the things that we have upcoming. Um, we're going to keep doing um, our workshops. So we have one coming up next week on internalized homophobia and how that affects um, young gay by queer men's lives. Um, and we also have a workshop in December around sex toys. Um, just going to see um, during exam period if guys just want to play with sex toys with us. And <laughs> with us or without us. Or <laughs> all together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're also going to hold a social event uh, called Off the Hook. Um, do you want to? Yeah, well, Off the Hook is just a fun event that we've been trying to plan for a while, where like people need to leave their phone at the front door and spend a full night in a social context without their phone. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but how can we live tweet? Um, I know we're we also want to make that. Um, into a satire around like our experience on grinders and other like um, app for meeting other young gay men. Um, we've or actually not young. <laughs> we're also looking at um, providing peer support and counseling um, and seeing um, what that could look like if we could develop something like that. Uh, as I said before, a guy on the working committee is um, a registered social worker in Ontario and has offered to start providing uh, free counseling to, to any of the guys in the collective that may be interested in, in wanting to access that. And free counseling is, is an amazing kind of opportunity for people, so we're looking at that. We're also looking at uh, research capacity building. So those of you from Vancouver and the, at the CBRC may know about the investigators program. As soon as I heard about the investigators program, I was super jealous. And I wanted it to happen in Toronto, and I thought there were so many amazing guys who would be interested in that program, and then also a lot of great researching, research happening in Toronto and Ontario. And I wanted to pull that all together and see if we could develop some kind of training program to you know, help develop the future of gay men's health research in Toronto and Ontario. So that's kind of like a brief overview of our space. Um, just a couple of acknowledgements. We have no funders to thank. But we're going to thank <laughs> our, our working committee, um, ACT, the GMSH, and 519 for, for giving us free space. And thank you all for listening. And again, this is our interview. <laughs>